What is it that Africa wants? Africans want. Uh, we can't be um, observers uh, of all these powers are coming in. And therefore, um, you're most welcome. You can come in. Um, you, we can't be observers. We have to be active. This is our continent. We need to draw the line in the sand on a number of key issues. And as we all are aware, in 1963, the major issue that came was that with Africa's uh, unity, with Africa's uh, post Muguru era, how should Africa move forward to defend its freedom? One of the key questions was how do we relate to the outside world? And as you all know, the history of the OAE, at the key of it, it all took place during the Cold War. And therefore, I think what uh, transpired was that through the legal span of action, we have to recall these documents because we can't just speak. We are guided by documents written by our leaders uh, and us, and we need to go back to these historical documents to understand where we are now. In the Lagos plan of action, the thinking was Africa cannot develop in the current, in then current order where the Cold War was happening. And therefore, for Africa to develop, we had to cut our relationship with the outside world. And the key way was cooperation. We have to cooperate as African countries among ourselves and block out the giants um, other countries. Because the more we open ourselves to the bigger powers, the more they exploit us and we want to develop. Now, post-Cold War era, with the Nepal process, African Renaissance and the thinking of transformation of the OAU to AU, there was a total different outlook, 180 degrees shift. The shift through the Nepal process, APR, um, Agenda 2063, these are important documents that we need to reference in what we do and say. The thinking was for us to develop, we can't do develop on our own. We have to enter into what we call strategic partnership with countries that are developed to assist us to develop. We identified these countries as key, the number one economy in the world, which is United States. Whatever issues we have with United States, it remains the dominant power. United States is a strategic partner. And therefore, Friday, as our head of states and government officials fly to Washington as we speak, um, uh, it's part of that, a summit with the U.S. leadership. And this is the second uh, summit. And I do take what the deputy minister said. The first summit was in Washington. The second summit is in Washington. I think we call upon our leaders um, to say the third summit is not supposed to happen on the African continent. We cannot uh, time and again have our leaders go to other capitals without prioritizing our own capitals. We do that with China. Every three years we go to Beijing and the other three years we come here. I think we've done that with Japan that we exchange. Therefore, there is no one who is more important. This relationship is supposed to be equal and as it stands with the U.S. at the moment, it is an unequal. We go in and uh, a lot of uh, photo shoots, um, but we need to go beyond the picture and good look good 
and to go on substantive issue. And therefore, indeed, there are so many of countries that are coming. I think the attention of most people is United States and China. But let us not forget, yes, these are the most important, that are core, they are each other's uh, throat in terms of competition. However, there are a number of smaller powers that are coming. They are coming in big numbers. I think my fellow panelists have alluded in figures uh, the number of these players. We need to pay attention to understand the intentions of these powers and what we want from them. But then the bigger question is, why now? Why are we having this convergence of powers on our continent? We need to give simple answers. Is that the world we live in, it's the power matrix is shifting. There's this titanic shift. We are moving from a unipolar world that in the post-Cold War, United States, I had my fellow panelists, Dr. Wesley, mentioning Huntington and Fukuyama, end of history. That world in which United States became the sole dominant power, it is coming to an end. Power, as we know it, is shifting from the Western world more to Asia uh, in terms of population, in terms of economic activities, uh, in terms of capital. There is less hard cash in the West. Uh, cash is in the Asia. So I do not think that we need to go to uh, the late uh, Bob Mugabe, who said we need to look to the East. I think our main aim should to look 180 degrees. Let's to be really secure. You have to look uh, all directions and, and strengthen your security. Yes, bring partners on board, but do it with policy sovereignty. So this shift, it happens all the time. And what is worrying is that history tells us whenever these shifts happen, a war takes place. It's given, it's natural that the conflicts, whether it's Ukraine, it's Syria, Iraq, on our own continent, over our minerals in the DRC, uh, Mozambique, it's minerals as well, nothing else. Wherever minerals come, there are issues. Because if they are not resolved peacefully, history tells us the battlefield resolves everything else. And God forbids that we do not go that historical route of a global war. It is possible, accidental wars do happen all the time. So we are worried when we see on the horizon mm. the tension in South China Sea, United States is moving all its arm, um, hard way from the Middle East one and everywhere else into South China Sea. Um, and other powers are threatened, are also building up military. There hasn't been any time where the machinery, the manufacture of weapons are making massive profit. Now, whether it's Ukraine, um, we know that this will end in tears for all of us uh, if we are not careful. And therefore, I really, South Africa's foreign policy and position on Ukraine is the right position. We need peace and security to reign in that through negotiations and to avoid using the barrel of the gun to resolve uh, issues uh, and, and conflicts. And it is important for us to pay attention to these issues, that it's happening out there, it could happen here, and the same method is used. We also need to understand other issues that are taking place in international relation is that we are the future. I've mentioned that the current world is looking to the East as the dominant and new power, but our own continent is the future. We are at 1.3 billion people. Unlike all other continents, 
we are the youngest continent. Uh, Population-wise, we have the youngest people than any other. And if you look what is happening, I see all of you holding cell phones and gadgets. The future is going digital. And the continent is going to be one of those consumer of this, um, and therefore investments and competition of big power is looking at that market uh, uh, as a future market. Yes, China is big. Yes, India is big. Um, but the real future of world capitalism lies in Africa. And we need to be aware of that. And how do we prepare ourselves to become not just an observer of all what is happening, but to become a player that we want to be a pillar in this international relation. So key issues that of what we want, it's a reform of the institution of global governance. At a level of United Nations, we need to ensure that when big powers preach about democracy, human rights, and they don't practice what they talk about. Uh, they're having democracy summits and all this noise they make. We look in their domestic arena, we don't see human rights. We do not see democracy. There's violence. Um, 6th of January, uh, Capitol Hill, people are moving with chairs. There is havoc as much as in Somalia. Havoc in terms of the, those institutions are not working. There is a crisis of democracy. So the idea that democracy resides in the West, we have to dispense with that idea that democracy does reside in our own countries. We have something to teach the West about democracy. We need to assert that, that we're not the receivers uh, of democracy. We are also uh, givers of democracy in practice. We have challenges, I know. Uh, everyone looks at me as if I just dropped, given the nature of our elections, and I know a number of elections are taking place, including in our own country. Um, however, if you look at the institutions and the future of democracy, democracy is much more safer here than in the Western world. We need to be assertive to accept these views, that's so that we don't have preachers of democracy among ourselves. But the key issues that the 20th century, we've talked about the old age, we've talked about all what is happening, the intentions of our leaders, and liberation, pan-Africanism. Yes, all these are nice and good issues. They, we are undergoing a, one of the greatest threat to our liberty, to our democracy, to our freedom, and real recolonization. And this recolonization is not through the Bible and the gun, as in the 20th century. This is through digital colonialism. We don't hear our leaders talk about it. That your entire history, your entire data that defines who you are does not reside in South Africa or on the African continent. It resides in California. On a daily basis you generate data and that data is the new oil. We don't own our own data. And the scary part of it, uh, when you communicate with our officials everywhere, that they are not aware that the cell phones they use, even the emails that you communicate with them, it's harvested, it's stored, somewhere else. And unless we wake up to this reality and say, yes, we need these gadgets, but we need data sovereignty. 
we need to ensure that data centers are here in South Africa on the African continent. No, the uneven development in terms of our countries, not all of us can build data centers and maintain them 24 hours, given ESCO challenges. We need to unite at the regional level, have this data set for the region, for the continent, ensure that we secure. This is what Europe is doing. This is what China has done already. This is what Russia has done. And when we sign these agreements, Kenya, the trade agreement with the United States to renew our core, one of the conditions is that you need to open up your data to American companies. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will end in Kenya. It will come to South Africa and everywhere else as we renew our core. The conditions, new conditions. What it does, it undermines the very same the free trade agreement we've signed. We're uniting at the continental level, but bilaterally as we enter into agreements with these powerful countries that are put in conditions that undermines our own collective efforts of integration of the continent. So I think our job at the center is to study some of these issues. Uh, we have done a major study on data sovereignty and looking at case studies, Latin America, we looked at China, India, we looked at United States and Europe, and we see we are the weakest link. Uh, it's a free ride, um, world, world west when it comes to data issues, or even awareness of what the digital world. And one of the major issues that when we talk about data, They'll say, are you an engineer? These are technical issues. They should be left to engineers. This is very much political, as it is um, technical. Very much political that we need to be aware and conscientize our leaders to deal with these issues. Lastly, Deputy Minister, I think that international relations is only one illness, a cause that I love so much. I've studied it the rest of my life. It is very elitist uh, by its very nature. Um, we need to domesticate um, and ensure that we take international relation and put it in a very simple way for our people to understand. It is nothing else other than just an extension of your domestic policy. What is it for South Africa? It's to deal with unemployment, poverty, inequality, to close those gaps using foreign policy. Therefore, you don't need President Xi Jinping for the sake of shaking a hand, or President Biden for shaking a hand. You ask whole question, what is it that we can extract from China to our advantage? What is it that we can extract from the United States uh, and other places? And therefore, I think we need to ensure that foreign policy it's simplified, it's understood by our people across the continent. Um, 